In this presentation, we will try to discuss divergence of vector field and then building up on divergence, we will try to explain the Gauss theorem or the divergence theorem. So from differential theorem, we will move to the integral theorem. Let us first start with divergence of a vector field. Vector field, as we discussed previously, is a space which is full of bunch of vectors. Every point within a space is defined by a vector in a vector field. So every point has got a particular magnitude and direction related. Sometimes the vector dimension might become very big, so we can normalize the vectors and bring them within a certain range. If we try to traverse through a vector field, we will encounter different vectors. We can take example of a beam subjected to some loading. Every point within a beam can move with, with some displacement, and the displacement of each and every point can be described in the form of vector field. Similarly, a vector field can be related to fluid flow. So every point in a vector field might be describing the flow of a fluid particle in a particular direction. Divergence of a vector field is actually a quantity describing the density of vectors within a particular region. So for example, in this vector field, if we take this purple region and we try to find out how many vectors are going in the region and how many vectors are coming out. In other words, we find out the outflow minus inflow. So a flux which is coming out, if that is bigger than the flux which is going inside the region, that can be described as a positive divergence. Let us take example of this vector field where everything is coming out or it is diverging. We can see that within our reference region, as we move towards the right, the magnitude of vectors increases. Towards the left, the magnitude of vector decreases. That tells us that there is more outflow as compared to inflow. Thus, we can call this as a positive divergence. Therefore, divergence of a vector field is a scalar function that represents the rate at which the vector field vectors spread out from or converge toward a point. As we discussed, this vector field can be related to displacement of particles of a beam subjected to some loading or it might be related to particles of a fluid which is flowing. The main idea behind defining a divergence is to tell us if there is any region where we can have concentration of vectors. That region can be of very high stress concentration or it might be a sink where most of the fluid is going out. In this vector field, we have got a typical scenario of convergence where all the vectors are meeting at one point. So within our reference region, we have inflow but no outflow. As we said, that divergence is outward outflow minus inflow that makes our divergence negative in this case. Whereas in the scenario where we have the vectors diverging away, the case is of positive divergence. Based on the discussion we have made, we can say that divergence of a vector field is equal to partial v by partial x1 plus partial v by partial x2 plus partial v by partial x3, where v is a vector field and x1, x2 and x3 are the axes of our coordinate system. The coordinate system is shown 
in this figure. Now let us try to explore what this formulation is saying. Imagine we have got a point P around which we are trying to find out the divergence. So point P can be the region within the vector field. Now, as we can see from the magnitude of the arrows, that as the arrows move in the horizontal direction, their magnitude increases. Based on this, we can say that the rate of change of the vector field corresponding to x1 direction, which we take as horizontal, is greater than zero. The vector field V2 minus V1 divided by X2 minus X1 is greater than zero. And that is in accordance with the definition of partial derivative. In this another example, we have at point B inflow bigger than the outflow. So the magnitude of the vector moving horizontally towards P is bigger then the magnitude of vector moving out. Thus, V2 minus V1 divided by X2 minus X1 is less than zero. So the first case is the case of positive divergence, whereas the second case is the case of negative divergence. The same argument can be made for X2 axis and X3 axis. Therefore, we can say that in divergence, we take a very small infinitesimal area or a small infinitesimal body and find the flux around it. By flux, we mean any value of the function. The flux can be a displacement, it can be a flow, or it can be stress at a particular point. Now, reminding ourselves with the vector calculus definition of differential, we said that df by dx is equal to flux of flow over the boundary delta x by length delta x, where delta x is made equal to zero. In the light of this definition, our divergence of a vector field at a point is defined as the flux around the body of certain volume B, where the volume of the body is made 10 to 0. The flux in the case of divergence of vector field is the scalar product of vector field times the normal, where n is the normal vector corresponding to the boundary of the body. Correspondingly, we have an integral theorem associated with the divergence, normally called as divergence theorem or the Gauss theorem. The Gauss theorem follows the fundamental theorem of calculus. According to this theorem, if we take a continuous function f and plot its derivative df by dx, then the integral of this derivative is equal to the value of the function at B minus value of the function at A. Using this fundamental theorem of calculus, we can derive the divergence theorem. According to the divergence theorem, in the divergence theorem, we are saying that take divergence of a vector field, integrate it over a big chunk of area within the vector field so that the scalar product of the vector field time the unit normal on the boundary integrated over the surface area of the body is equal to the volume integral. In other words, the first integral shows the volume integral having divergence of the vector field and that is equal to the dot product of the vector field with the unit normal vector integrated over the 
surface area of the body. So imagine we have this 3D body, which can be a 3D sphere or, for example, or it can be any shape 3D body of sizable volume. The divergence of the vector field, in other words, overall outflow minus inflow of the flux through this body is equal to the flux in the direction normal to the boundary integrated over the surface area of the body. The idea of this is similar to what we have done in fundamental theorem of calculus where we have got a function integrated between a and b and that is equal to or reduced to the value of a function at b minus the value of the function at a in other words the dimension of the function has been reduced to two points similarly in the case of the divergence theorem we have the flux through the volume of a body being reduced to one dimension less, which is flux through the surface area of the body. This theorem helps us to convert the volumes into areas or to upgrade the areas into volumes.